All right, I got another PF Sense video for you guys. I've had a few people ask me saying, can you do a video on specifically the port forwarding? And actually this is a common question. I do it all the time, so it's uh, I run through it kind of quick and I think I went through it kind of quick in some of the other ones. Now, not just port forwarding, it, I'll show you port forwarding and uh, this is a my lab that I've got set up here and I've got it set up with two WANs failover in two separate networks. Now. It gets a little bit confusing when you're doing NAT because people think when you make the NAT rule for something to pass through that it just carries over, but it doesn't. NAT rules have to be implicitly bound to each WAN. So we're going to run through and pretend uh, just doing port 80 basic web server and uh, we'll show you how to map the ports here. So we've got no rules, uh, no visibility into my network and we're going to open up the firewall and we're going to use my computer. Now, if you didn't notice, we'll jump back real here to the beginning, is uh, this is a 192.168.1.1 network. We have a 192.168.2 network and a 192.168.3 network. So we've got, you know, three different networks. My particular computer's IP address is 192.168.1.9. So we'll go over here to firewall and we're going to start with NAT. And then we're going to add a rule. Now, when you're building NAT rules, it by default will land on the WAN interface. You can have them land on the LAN interface. You can have them do on, I just called it WAN2, but you could have called it whatever. Uh, sometimes for some clients when we're setting up a WAN failover, we'll rename them. One will call one ISP and we'll call the other one the other ISP. For example, Comcast could be one, I, one of the WAN interfaces and the other one could be called AT&T. Helps us identify them when we're looking at them because uh, you may not remember by the IP address. But anyways, because this is my lab, we just call them WAN1 and WAN2. Keep it simple. So first we know what interface this NAT rule is applying to. Then we know is it a TCP, UDP, or TCP, UDP port. We're just going to leave it TCP because we're doing our pretend web server. Now I can pull from the list and put www, but uh, I just I know the port, so I type them in, port 80. Now the target IP is the IP we want to land on. We're landing on this computer as we're setting up our pretend web server on this. So the target IP is you know whatever the web server is internally. Um, the external IP is the WAN address. Now, there are some advanced options where you can get in there and you can filter for certain IP addresses. Uh, by default, we're going to leave this wide open, let anything come here. But you can specify, for example, uh, the incoming traffic that only this port is only visible by this one other computer. And you do that sometimes if you have two different sites set up. And just one more precautionary step, you're going, I'm filtering all traffic unless it comes from that IP. Of course, some IPs can be spoofed, but it's one more little layer you can add on there. Now, you can type in any custom port range, uh, but the other thing here, the reason there's a to and from on here, but on the other side, only one port, is because whatever you set at the beginning, if I set this one to be 100, I still leave this one at 80, because what it's doing is port 80 is here, so this is the beginning port, so I don't have to like do dash 100 or anything, it will automatically forward all the next ports. Now, if I started that this one at 100, it would actually forward from 100 to 120, all of those ports in there, because there's a 20 port range. So that's why you don't need that, because I've had people ask, okay, you know, how does that work if I want to have a, a range of ports forwarded? So we're just going to leave them 80, 80, and this was our WAN www server now, NAT reflection, use system default. Uh, if you're not familiar with what NAT reflection is, this is a really handy thing. Um, I've showed you in some of the other PF Sense videos, you by default turn this on and also add associated filter rule. Both of those leave at default. What NAT reflection does, and there's not much of a reason to turn this off. For example, let's say you have a DVR and you have an external IP address or maybe a uh, URL set up for that DVR so you can use it via your cameras. But when you're on your internal network, you're trying to view that DVR, but it's local to you. And that's what NAT reflection does. It says, wait a minute, you're inside this network, but you're trying to get to it from the outside, but we, we understand that, so we're going to reflect it back inward without actually going out. But that way you can leave one URL, you can leave the public IP in your settings while still having that work. So that's what the NAT reflection is. So leaving all that on is fine. You can also create the rules disabled uh, if you need to. Um, then you can in do them later. You can also do some inverted options and things like that. So it kind of depends if you want to do 
all those kind of really detailed filtering on this. Um, and of course, the added filter associated filter rule is first you have to have a NAT translation which says this external IP lands this to this internal IP, but then there has to be an associated firewall rule to actually allow the passing of traffic. And it does that by default. So there's that one on the WAN address. Now we're gonna add another one, essentially the same thing again here. But we're choosing WAN2, because that's our failover one. So this is our WAN2 www. All the same rules apply. And this is how you map if you have a failover address. Now, how that works in practice is a little bit different because we're gonna apply the changes here. Um, you're, you're not making your web server redundant per se because what you've done is you have two separate networks because this is WAN2 network and this is WAN1 network. So you have to only point them at one of them. And you have to make, if one of these goes down, which you still want people to get to your web server, you still need to rechange a DNS setting to point it to the other side. Now, where there's redundancy in this works is we've helped people with mail servers behind there. So if you have a mail server, you can add to your MX records a lower priority MX. So you will pick one to be the primary, one to be the secondary. But this is all you have to do to map this across there is add one mapping for each one. So interface WAN1, WAN2. And when we look at the uh, rules for the firewall, you can see NAT WW server for the WAN and then the WAN2, yet another one on here. Now let's actually show you this working. I'll run a little test here. All right, so we're going to run uh, netcat-l. We're going to listen on port 80 over here. Now this particular uh, computer called The Box actually has its uh, two network cards. And with two network cards, it can go to each one of those IP addresses. It has a network card that's in each of these networks. It's all part of my lab setup. So the first IP address we'll go to is the one here. So we'll uh, tell net 2.33 port 80. And we see over here, we see hello, and it hello comes across. So we're able to port through on that one. So we'll close that and we'll open up this again. Listen on port 80, and now we're going to do the other IP address, and it's in the three network, 3.251, 80. Hi from WAN1. So you can see this works. It's really simple to do, um, but some people do get confused. They think you can only make one NAT rule and because these are together. Now, because they have separate IP addresses, there's not a way just to make one NAT rule and have them just work together. I actually think there's a way in PFSense you may be able to alias them together as one, uh, but reality is you want to map the rules. And you also have to think, do you need to wrap the rules? Uh, when we set these up for some clients, other than having an internal mail server and MX records for failover, having the web server, because you have to go in and make a DNS change, um, and have a secondary DNS for them to flow through on there, it may not be the most practical setup for you because uh, it doesn't really work in the way some people think, oh, if I have two ISPs, it just doubles my bandwidth. No, because you circuits need a single IP address to go through so it doesn't double your bandwidth. Um, this is more for failover purposes. I mean, there are routing things you can do where you can push some over other traffic and create rules to create, uh, you know, where this data goes over this circuit and that data goes extra, but that's a different topic. Um, and it can help your speed. But this is just to show you really quickly how to do NAT. And if you happen to have more than one WAN address for every WAN address you have. Now, even if those are a group of IPs assigned to you, for example, we buy a block of IP, uh, five IPs, it's the same thing. You have to create a rule for each IP address and a NAT rule for them so, they have, so it flows through. So that's just a quick overview of how that works. Uh, hopefully it answers anybody who had questions on this. Uh, if you have some comments or questions or need another tutorial on this, uh, leave some comments below and I'll work on that one. Thanks. Oh, if you like the content here, like and subscribe.